Hey guys, what's up? It's Raven and welcome back to yet another home decor update video. This is the series where I show you guys the updates on all of the renovation, remodeling, and furnishing projects that I have going on around my house. As you can tell from the title, this video is going to be focused on the outdoor area of my home, specifically the backyard. And if you saw my last video like this, it was all about my pool and basically how the pool was finished and the backyard was somewhat finished, but really not finished. So so I'm here with a bunch of updates on stuff that has been done in the backyard, everything kind of surrounding the pool since then. I literally wrote a list. I have a whole list of updates, so let's just jump right into it. So we left off the last video with me showing you guys the pool itself, how it was done, it was finished, it was swimmable. We had the patio surrounding it. I had a few furniture pieces, a few little things, but there was still some empty areas and a lot of missing aspects. So one of the first things that I added after that video were plants. I definitely wanted to have a really just like a lush resort vibey feel to my backyard. So I wanted like cool potted plants and the agaves and the yuccas. And those are the types of plants I like. I don't like flowers. I mean, I can do like a white flower every now and then, but for the most part, I really didn't want any flowers in my landscaping at all. I don't have any in the front yard and I currently don't have any in the backyard either. So I added some potted yucca, 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 which is just kind of a spiky leafy plant. I had two black pots from CB2 that I had bought way back when, whenever they were having a sale, I ended up using them for these potted plants. And a cute little touch that I added was putting some white rocks on top, which again, just kind of gives it that cute like resort vibe. But along with that, I also needed to kind of fix up the planters that are on either side of the pool. They already had the plants in them, but I needed to add some more black mulch to them. They needed to like fix the irrigation. So they kind of messed up my mulch so I went back added some black mulch so I'm really happy with those planters now I love agaves I love a blue agave I love a leafy green plant I love just those vibes and then I had these other tall planters that I knew I wanted to have a big leafy plant on my patio and I thought a bird of paradise plant would be perfect so I went to this nursery this kind of like local nursery and I bought two bird of paradise plants for $100 each so $200 worth of bird of paradise. I just thought that's what they cost. Like, I don't know. I don't really know anything about plants, but I left them for my assistant to go pick up later. And something happened when she went to go pick them up. I don't know what happened because I picked out two beautiful, perfect, healthy plants. And the ones that she brought home, the ones that they gave her to bring home to me were not beautiful and healthy. They was looking crusty, dusty, rusty, beat down, broke down and sad. For $100 a pop, for 100 doll hairs a pop, I don't want these crusty leaf plants. So long story short, I had her return those to the local nursery because I realized that Lowe's, good old Lowe's, had this exact type of plant, same size, same pot size, same everything, looked even better than the ones at the nursery. And they were only like 30, $40. This is only $29.98. These three are the options for the bigger $50 size. Here's the slightly smaller, like $30 size. There's not that big of a size difference between them, honestly. Like this one's pretty tall. It's not in great condition though. Any of this would be a better deal same result. So I'm actually kind of glad that the whole mishap happened with the nursery because it ended up saving me a lot of money. I was able to get a refund on that $200 and only spend like less than $100 for the both of them. So if you're looking for Bird of Paradise plants, check out Lowe's. <laughs> Not sponsored, but it came in clutch. If you guys have been following me on Instagram, and I've been updating you guys on my Instagram stories on how they're doing and they're really growing. Like they're sprouting a lot of new leaves. They look really good. Well, one of them looks really, really good. The other one, as of today, she doesn't look as good. But one of them, I mean, I'm really like proud of like how I've been able to grow this plant since I first bought it. Cause I really don't have a green thumb. I really have not owned a lot of actual real life plants in my life. So I'm trying to learn how to take care of plants. I'm trying to develop a green thumb. So I'm really proud of myself for this specific one. I feel like she looks good. And then another like plant thing that I added was I made this DIY succulent 
mint bowl planter thing. I bought a planter bowl from at home. So this is a special bowl that's made to put plants in. And then I bought a bunch of succulents and rocks and dirt and made this little cute arrangement with real succulents. You can definitely buy these pre-made or you can buy fake ones, but they're usually like small and really expensive. And I just wanted to make like a real cute, nice one, like a real one. So I did this. If you guys haven't seen it, I did post a TikTok all about it with the full details, full tutorial and process. So definitely follow me on TikTok if you're not already. And you can go check out that video on the succulent bowl. Speaking of not having a green thumb, I asked you guys what would be a good plant for this area near my front door because it doesn't really get sunlight. It's kind of like blocked off the way that that kind of hallway is. You guys said snake plants. They also had those at Lowe's. So I got two of those and I have two big planters, put it on either side. I think it looks super cute. It's definitely the green leafy spiky vibe that I'm going for overall. And again, it's been a few weeks since I first put those in. I literally have not touched them. Haven't watered them, haven't done anything and they're still perfectly fine. So I can confirm that this is a great plant for someone who doesn't know anything about plants. Like they say this type of plant is basically impossible to kill. So, so far so good with that. So yeah, those snake plants are by my front door. Also in the front yard, I kind of just wanted to show you guys what the front yard is looking like these days. It's kind of, uh, you know, good news and bad news. Good news is a lot of the plants that have been there for a minute have really started to grow in and get really big. I love my big, huge blue agaves, but bad news is some of the other plants are not doing as well. But you know, I'm still really trying to get the front yard together because obviously the front yard is what people mostly see, especially as they're just kind of driving by my house. Even if they don't know me, they see my front yard. So I want that to look really good, but it's been a process y'all. It has been a very trial and error process trying to get that front yard together. So there's still some things that I need to change or add or fix with the front yard, but it looks okay for now. Anyways, back to the backyard. So I added all those plants and then I also was having to continue to gather star jasmine vine plants for my trellis project. So if you've been watching my videos, my vlogs, I've been talking about this vision that I have for the back wall of my yard because I have that kind of tan, warm tone stone wall that's just like part of my neighborhood. And due to the HOA rules in my neighborhood, I'm not allowed to touch that wall. But I really don't like that wall because I don't like the color and the material. It just does not match my aesthetic. It does not match my vibe that I'm going for. I have a gray, black, white theme in my backyard. There's no warm tones. There's no brown, orange, yellow. So I was like, what can I do to cover that wall without touching the wall. So that's where I came up with this trellis idea. And a trellis is basically a structure that vine plants can attach themselves to and grow on. And I saw these inspo pictures on Pinterest of people who had these foliage walls, essentially like these big, I don't even know how to, I mean, you see for yourself, it's like, it's plants, but it's a wall. And I really wanted that vibe in my yard. Originally, I thought that I was going to actually plant trees along this back wall. Like if you guys remember when I I first got my design made by Yardzen when they gave me the digital rendering of what they thought of for my yard. It had a whole bunch of trees going along really the whole entire yard. In reality though, that would not have been possible because of just space and the root systems and there's irrigation pipes. When I actually started looking into it, I basically realized that I cannot plant trees right there between the pool and the wall. Like it's just not gonna work. So I had just been gathering star jasmine plants for that future project because I knew I was gonna need like, at first I was thinking like 20 something plants, then it ended up being like 32 plants that I actually needed. And as I was shopping for them, I would go to the plant nursery and they would only have like five. So I would buy five and then I would go somewhere else and they would have 10 of them. So I buy 10, I go somewhere else, they have three. So I buy those three. So I was like over the course of two months going all around town, calling everyone, having my assistant and go everywhere and call everyone trying to find star jasmine plants because I need 32 of these. So whoever got them, give them to me. And finally, there was one place that got in a big shipment of them and I literally bought them out. But I was really glad to finally have all of them. In the meantime, there was of course hoopla going on in the backyard before I could even get started on that trellis project because there was issues with my irrigation. Again, I think this is probably like the fifth time that I've had issues with my irrigation like sprinklers. 
system. Just things keep going wrong. Pipes keep getting burst. Things keep getting disconnected or connected improperly. Mistakes being made. And so basically somehow throughout the process of them building my pool, they like disconnected something and forgot to reconnect it at some point when they were building the pool. And so there's something on this side of the house that's disconnected and it needs to be reconnected all the way around the other side of the house. So they ended up digging a trench around my whole entire house. They had to tear up a whole bunch of grass and tear up a whole bunch of stuff and fix the irrigation problem. In the middle of them trying to fix that issue with the pipes, they accidentally cut my internet line. So then the internet people had to come out and reconnect that. And then they put it all back together, but then one part of it still wasn't working. And then it just, who knew that a sprinkler system could be so stressful? But another piece of hoopla, I realized that the patio area near the grill, I realized that it was pooling water whenever we would use the water hose or whenever it would rain in the corner near the house, up against the house. It's attracting mosquitoes and it's just, it's not good to have standing water. The water is supposed to run off the patio so it can stay dry. Something about the way this patio was built, they for some reason slowly sloped it the opposite way. So the water is going like this and pooling instead of running off the edge to keep it dry. So I was like, are they going to have to completely rip out this patio and redo it? Like, what are they gonna do to fix this? But they ended up being able to fix it by basically cutting a little trench where the water can kind of flow down in that little trench and run off the patio. It ended up working out pretty well. I was just glad that they didn't have to completely rip out and redo anything. That was kind of stressful for a minute, but they did end up finding a pretty straightforward solution. So then once everything with the irrigation issues and the water patio issues were fixed, then I was able to have someone come and build my custom trellis for my jasmine wall. So I actually ended up using the same company who did my fencing because that's like the type of material I wanted it to be built out of. I really didn't want like your standard wooden thing because that's not very like durable long Long term and it also wouldn't have given me like the modern look that I wanted. I really wanted like the black metal to kind of match everything else because although the main idea is for the plants to grow in and completely cover this trellis, of course it takes time for the plants to grow in. And then also of course in the winter seasons, it might kind of die off and come back a little bit. So I know there's going to be times when the trellis itself is showing. So I wanted it to be nice looking, if that makes sense. Even though for the most part, I wanted to be completely covered up. So they came, but it was a bunch of hoopla because there are pipes right there where they're trying to build it that go to the sprinkler system and go to the pool. So they needed to be really careful because they were going to be digging holes so they could put the stakes in the ground and have that be secure. They needed to dig a bunch of holes for all the little poles, but they had to be super careful with digging the holes because if they shove their jackhammer and just start digging holes wherever they needed to, most likely they were gonna hit a pipe. And if they hit a pipe that's connected to my pool, that's gonna be bad, bad news. So I didn't really realize all that was gonna be going on. So it was a very tedious process of carefully digging up the ground to see where all the pipes were to make sure that we didn't hit any pipes. And it was just this whole thing. Unfortunately, we did not have like a map from the pool construction, but eventually they did get it figured out. They did get it done. They had to be like very specific with the placement to miss the pipes. So I originally wanted the trellis to be as close to the stone wall as possible, but like there was a pipe right there. So they had to bring it in a little bit. So it's kind of like right in between, like here's the pool, here's the stone wall. The trellis is going like right down that alleyway, which I think is fine. It still gives the same look. So they finished the trellis and I thought it looked really good. I was happy with it. I was like, phew, okay, they did a good job. I like it good. It was expensive, so I was nervous about it, but I like it. It. The only thing was, I didn't realize that they weren't going to move the plants out the way before they started building it. So they essentially built this big old iron wall in front of all the plants that we need to get so we can plant the plants. And so the plants were like locked behind the trellis because there wasn't really any space to like go behind the trellis. And so that was kind of a funny thing where I was like, oh, oops, I need to get those plants from behind there. But I ended up being able to like crawl underneath 
teeth and get them out. So then I called a landscaper to come and plant the plants for me in front of the trellis. And unfortunately when he came out and got started planting, he was like, there is so much limestone in this ground that I am having trouble getting through it to be able to dig holes to plant the plants. He was like, I also don't really recommend you trying to plant these plants into such limestone rocky ground because that's not gonna be really good soil for them to grow in. So he was like, so unfortunately, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this job today. And I would actually recommend that you do a raised plant bed instead of trying to plant them in the ground. And I was like, okay, so what's that process gonna be? What's that price gonna be? Cause I know it's gonna be a lot more. He explained it to me and I was like, oh Lord, like I wasn't trying to do all that. After doing some more research, after brainstorming on it a little bit more, I ended up hiring a different landscaper who was like, look, we can go buy some good soil, dig all the nasty rocky dirt out and replace it with bot nice soil. That way your plants can grow. And he's like, I work in this area a lot. I'm very familiar with the limestone and you know, having to use a jackhammer to get it out. He's like, I can do it for you. You, you can plant these plants in the ground and I can do it for you. And I was like, phew, okay, thank you. So he came, he did that. It worked out, hallelujah. So boom, now we have the trellis. We have the plants planted in front of the trellis. The last step was to kind of finish out the top of it. Cause of course them just being straight planted in the ground doesn't look very nice. So put mulch on top, put some edging around it to kind of give it a clean finish. And now it is done. Well, almost done. They forgot to add the little caps to the top of the trellis, but after that it'll be done. And next steps are to just really take really good care of these jasmine plants so that they will grow and flourish and fill in the entire trellis and give me this look of the full jasmine wall where it's just like full greenery and you can't even really see the trellis behind it. So that's pretty much everything with the plants. So moving on to furniture, I did finally get my little end table to go between my two chairs. This end table is from CB2, really simple, but it was on back order. So I was waiting months and months for it to be delivered. It matches the coffee table that I already have up on the other patio with the couch. And then a little bit after that, I finally got the dining table delivered, which which I also thought was going to perfectly match the end table and the coffee table. But when it was delivered, I was like, the color is different. The end table and the coffee table are both like a straight up pure white. The dining table is like off white. And I was like, uh, I didn't want off white because everything else that I have going on is pure white and it kind of clashes a little bit. But I waited so long for this table to be delivered y'all. Months and months and months and months and months. And the style of the table like you can't like I just uh, it's like I just didn't have it in me to try and do the whole return process and then try to find something else to replace it like what else would I even get so I really just was like you know what off-white pure white is it really that serious I'm over it let's just keep it let's just keep it and work with it and hopefully people just don't look at it that close <laughs> And maybe if all else fails at the end of the day, it is an outdoor table and it is gonna get some wear and tear. And so maybe after a while, if I feel up to it, I can paint it more of a pure white with some sort of outdoor paint and you know, kind of just DIY it to tweak it a little bit. But for now, I'm just gonna leave it because it's like, you know what? It's really not that important. I have bigger fish to fry with this whole project. For that area over there with the table and chairs though, I do wanna get one of those big umbrellas that kind of go from the side and then hang over. I'll put a picture here of some of the ones that I'm looking at, but I think like a black, just a black umbrella, just so it goes with the vibe. But that area is not covered at all. And so when you're sitting out there, I had like a 4th of July party and it was a little bit uncomfortable to just be sitting out in the blazing sun right by the grill. So I do think adding an umbrella would be like the perfect fix. I could get like a whole entire pergola built over it, but I don't want my whole yard to just be so permanently covered and built in. I like the idea of an umbrella because when you do wanna like open it up, you open it, but when you wanna close it and let more light, you can close it. So it's just more versatile so that it doesn't have to constantly be so like blocked in. Cause I do like the open airiness of it. It's just 
just, if the sun is blazing down, you wanna have the option to have some shade. And then I also will probably get another umbrella that actually goes at the pool, like with the pool, there's actually a little hole to put an umbrella right at the shallow part of the pool. So again, just so you can have some option if you wanna be in the shade while you're kind of lounging in the shallow end. So that's something that I still need to order. I'm still kind of comparing different brands and stuff because that's gonna be an investment as well. Umbrellas are expensive, but you want it to be a good quality one because you don't want it to be like breaking and cracking and blowing away. It needs to be really sturdy. So I'm still trying to figure out where I should get it from. And then as far as furniture, I am waiting on my lounge chairs to be delivered. The last pieces from Restoration Hardware. I had got the couch first and the dining chairs and the armchairs, but the lounge chairs were on back order until August. So it's July right now. Hopefully within the next few weeks, those will be delivered and then that will complete the furniture for back there for the most part. But so far with the Restoration Hardware furniture that I do have, I've had it for, you know, over maybe like three months. So over the past three months, I've gotten to see what it's like to own this very expensive Restoration Hardware furniture in this very, very pure white fabric. And everyone was like, why would you get that? It's gonna get destroyed. But it really does live up to its name as far as the fabric being like this performance linen, waterproof, stain proof, da 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 da. It really is because yes, it does get dirty because it's outside and I'm throwing parties and there's kids and blah, blah, blah. So it does get dirty, I'm not gonna lie. But literally all I have to do is take the water hose, hose it down and everything just like rolls right off. I am really liking my couch. You can see it's kind of dirty right now because I did just have a party but I have found that it is really easy to clean. I literally just take the cushions off, bring them out here onto the stairs and spray them down with the water hose and everything just rinses right off. And if I ever do get like a stubborn stain, I'll use a little bit of like shout stain remover and I haven't had any issues with keeping it clean. So whenever I know I'm gonna be having people over or something, I'll just rinse off the cushions and leave them in the sun to dry. And since the actual inside part is waterproof, the water doesn't like soak into the inside. It's only like the little outside layer that gets wet. So it dries really fast too. So I haven't had any issues with the maintenance and I do also have furniture covers. Honestly, I haven't been using them just because like I'm lazy about like putting the cover on and taking it off every single time you wanna use it every day. So I just leave it off for now because it's summer, we're using it. But definitely in the off season, I will keep them covered just to kind of help with that more. But yeah, I'm excited to get the lounge chairs to complete the collection. And I feel really confident with that purchase because I've already kind of gotten to see what the rest of the furniture is wearing like. And I'm like, okay, this was a good purchase. Another update is that they finally built the wall around the pool equipment. I feel like I was telling you guys about this how there was kind of some mishaps with that. But basically it's an actual HOA requirement in my neighborhood to have your pool equipment hidden. They don't wanna see all those pipes and things visible. So you have to have a wall around it. But then I also wanted to have a wall around it because I didn't wanna see it from the backyard. So there was a lot of hoopla with the wall and the configuration of that. Won't bore you with the details, but they finally got the wall built. Due to the hoopla, it ended up being a much bigger like enclosure than it was meant to be, but I'm just going to use the extra space for pool toy storage because there's just like a little empty space behind the wall so I can put the pool toys back there. That way you don't see it and it doesn't look cluttered. So that ended up kind of working out. It was a mistake, but at least I can use it for something. The last thing that they need to do with that is add the gate on the front of it. It's gonna be a black iron gate that matches everything else. And then they need to rebuild the fence that's right there that they had to take down in order to build it. They also came back finally, literally like four months later to touch up the the paint where there had um, been blue tape marking everything. Everyone kept asking me, what is this blue tape for? And it's like, this is the spots that need to be touched up. They kept saying they were gonna come back and clean it and touch it up and finish painting. And they never did for a long time, but they finally did that. So now everything is like fully painted, looks nice and crisp and fresh and clean and like finished. I do still need to get the coping, which is the border around the pool. I need to get that power washed. It's made out of Luder 
mortar, which I didn't know is an extremely porous stone, meaning that it absorbs things and it gets kind of like stained and dirty very easily. And mine is not sealed. So at this point it has already like gotten dirty. And so now I'm gonna have to power wash it and then seal it and make sure that I keep it sealed. I think you have to like go back every once in a while and put another coat of sealant on it. So that's something that still needs to be done. It still doesn't currently look great, but I'm working on that. And unfortunately the countertop near the grill is also made out of that same looter material. So through using it over the past few months, it has also gotten stained and dirty. So that also needs to be power washed and sealed. And hopefully I can make it work and make it look nice. Unfortunately, it's just really not actually a good material to use for countertops for that reason, especially like an outdoor countertop. And I just didn't know that I wasn't told it was not a good choice, but it's there. It was just recently built. I am honestly considering ripping it out, even though it's brand new, because I'm just like, if this is gonna continue to get stained and look dirty and look like this, do I just rip it out and use a different material for the countertop? I know that's a huge waste of money because I just paid for this to be put in and this is actually already the second outdoor kitchen countertop because I already had that first one that we ripped out in order to do this one. So this would now be the third one, but hey, third time's a charm maybe, I don't know. The reason why I am considering ripping it out and doing a different countertop is because I did talk to someone about designing my wet bar. So this blank space on my patio where it's just been ripped out and the TV is just up there. I keep telling you guys, I'm gonna do a wet bar. I'm not sure, blah, blah, blah. So I did finally design it. I just did my own little drawing. I'll put it on the screen now. Basically it's a wet bar. So you have a sink, you have a refrigerator. It's basically an area when you're entertaining, you can make drinks, serve drinks, you know, a wet bar. This is where the plumbing is like the plumbing hookup is right here. It's not over where the grill is. So where the grill is can only be the grill. Where this is, is where you can put a sink. So I thought, okay, let me just split up the two areas and have like the cooking area down where the grill is and then have this wet bar area up here. So as you can see in my drawing, it's like the sink in the middle and then two refrigerators on either side. Of course you have your countertop space and then above it you have the TV. So I had a contractor come out and look at the space, I showed them my sketch. They made an actual real sketch of it with proper measurements and everything that they would recommend. So this is what their schematic looks like. And I'm actually working with Carrie, who is the design consultant that I worked with on my rental property. She was super, super helpful. And all the contractors that she like linked us up with to actually do the work at the rental property were amazing. So I'm like, Ooh, Carrie, please help me finish out my backyard. So she came over and like, helped me design it. And then she also sourced a countertop already. And I actually already purchased the slab. It's a black granite. So pretty solid black granite because I want white cabinetry and then the black granite and then the backsplash tile that you see in my little sketch is actually supposed to be the same tile that's used on the pool. So that grayish black marble tile, I wanna repeat that over here. It's also already repeated by the grill. And then you can see how I have the backsplash going up really tall around the TV. Cause I just think that would be a cool feature. So yeah, I've got the schematic. I've got the countertop slab already purchased and I've got the whole design. I'm basically just waiting to schedule with them for them to come out and start building it. So I'm really excited about that. And I'm really happy to be working with Carrie and her people on it because working with her on the rental property was super smooth and painless compared to how everything has been at my house so far. So I'm like, please come over here and help me because we got to just get this done. <laughs> but said all that to say, since I am doing a black granite countertop, which is super durable, super, you know, obviously granite countertops, that's classic. You know that that's going to be a great countertop while I'm at it should I just go ahead and rip out the looter and put the granite over here as well. But I'm still deciding on that because I'm like, ugh, I really don't wanna be ripping stuff out that just got put in, but we'll see. So yeah, those are really the next steps is to start building the wet bar and then just waiting on, like I said, my lounge chairs to come in and the umbrellas and stuff like that, deciding if I'm going to fix the other countertop. And then one last thing that I'm trying to get done or I guess fix technically is the stairs. 
stairs. So in my last video, I showed you guys the stairs or just kind of the whole patio in general. And I mentioned how I wasn't super happy with how the cool coat came out. The cool coat is basically the color and texture of the patio. It's like a coating that they put on top of the cement. So it's on the whole patio and it's on the stairs. I really wasn't happy with how it turned out on the stairs specifically because the way that they like did the texturing just didn't seem to really work on the front of the stairs because it's like going vertical. So it seemed like, okay, it was cool for like the top flat surface of the floor. But then when they were doing the front section of the stairs, it just kind of looks like the liquid that they were using was being moved by gravity, which it was because it's vertical. So it's like drippy. So to me, it looks like my stairs are melting because it's supposed to look like a stone texture. But to me, it just looks like drips. It bothers me. So I'm looking into doing something about that to just like smooth it out like just have the front which is called the riser of the stair be smooth no texture and just the top part has the texture on it so i'm asking them if that's possible or if they will come back and do that or if i need to find somebody else who will come back and do that or just i don't know what needs to be done but i just don't like my drippy goopy looking stairs so that's another thing that i'm trying to get fixed and then the last thing after all that will be trees so in some of my vlogs you guys heard me talk talking about trees. I already obviously am not gonna be doing trees on the back wall cause I did the jasmine trellis instead there. But on the sides of my yard, I have neighbors on both sides. And right now there's no privacy. It's like, you can see directly all up in the house, all up in the yard, all up in the pool. Like it's just boom, wide open on both sides. So I wanted to plant trees going along the sides that would grow in and just kind of, you know, block it out and give some privacy. That was always the plan from the beginning. What ended up being difficult is trying to find the right kind of tree because there are a lot of trees that are not recommended to be planted near pools for several reasons. It could be that they drop leaves a whole bunch or drop flowers and then the leaves and the flowers go in your pool and clog your pump and break your pool. It could be that their root systems are very aggressive so they grow all up in the ground and go around your pool pipes and break your pool pipes. Or it could be something as simple as nothing to do with the pool but it's just not good for my climate, my location, or I just don't like the way that this type of tree looks, or this type of tree grows way too big and I don't have space, or this type of tree is too small, so it's not gonna be big enough to actually block and create privacy. When I tell you I had to become a tree expert looking at all these trees, cause it was just like something with each tree that was like, well, nope, can't get this one. Nope, shouldn't get that one. Nope. Long story short, still in the process of finding the right type of tree that I actually like the look of, that works well near pools, that that works well in my climate, that is the right size and shape to create privacy. So when I figure that out, I will be adding trees on the sides. I have time though, because it really wouldn't be smart to plant trees right now anyway, because it's so blazing hot. This summer has been record breakingly hot. So I was told that it would be better to plant these trees in the fall anyway. So by fall time, I plan to have my tree species picked out and I plan to plant the trees on the side so I can actually have privacy. Privacy. So next summer, when I'm throwing my pool parties and everything, I won't feel so awkward with my neighbors just like right there. <laughs> Whew, okay, I think that was the whole list. Hopefully you guys followed that. Definitely stay tuned. I'm really excited for the wet bar. That's probably gonna be the next thing that I, you know, update you guys on. And hopefully everything, you know, can go smooth from here on out. I've had a lot of mishaps and a lot of hoopla, but I am just ready for this to be done. I've already been enjoying the yard just as it is, but I'm really looking forward to it being fully done so I can fully enjoy it and just be done with this process. So yeah, stay tuned. <laughs>